Good evening, church. It is so good to be together. We're going to worship in a few minutes. Um, it's glad to be in the house of God. We begin the service. We always take time to be in prayer. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And with that same zeal, we invite you to worship with us this morning as we sing some Christmas songs together. If you can stand as you are able, hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King, peace on earth and mercy, my old God and sinners reconcile, joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies, with the angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born. Jesus, our Emmanuel, 
to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth, born to give a second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the new. Shepherds camp their watching over silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. So I say, Go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain. Christ is born. While shepherds fear and tremble, we'll low above the earth. Ring out our angel chorus that held our Savior's birth. Down in a lonely manger, our humble Christ was born. God's in our salvation on that blessed Christmas morn. So I say, go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Well, I was a lonely seeker. I saw both night and day, and I asked the Lord to help me, and He showed me the way. He made me a watchman upon the city wall, and if I am a Christian, I am the least of all. So I say, go. Tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. So I said, go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born, that Jesus Christ is born. Once again, good evening and welcome to First United Methodist Church in Bartow. We're so very glad you're here. We have many guests, so many that I will not say names because I don't want to be uh, the one who leaves somebody out without mentioning names. So uh, I do need to say in Spanish because we do have guests that speak Spanish here. So I would say bienvenidos y bienvenidas. <laughs> uh, may the Lord bless you tonight. I'm so glad that you all came. And I pray, my prayer is that the, um, the Holy Spirit will visit with you tonight. My prayer is that this will not be just another Christmas Eve. My prayer is that God 
God will make it a very special Christmas Eve. Um, we are not collecting offerings during COVID. We, don't, we are trying to avoid uh, close proximity. So if you brought an offering, we'll, we'll be glad to receive it. We just have the plates are uh, at the entrance to the church. There are like three plates in different parts and you can just um, leave them there. If you're visiting from another city, as we do have guests from Georgia, who used to be from Barto, but now they live somewhere else and they came. Welcome, Paige. Oops, I said a name. <laughs> um, I'll, get, I'll get there. Um, if you are visiting from another place and you're wondering at what time do we worship, we worship on Sundays at 10.30 in the morning. We have a, a blended service. So uh, you're welcome to come on uh, Sunday at 10.30 and we will be here to, to worship together. So let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, we come searching for you. We want to see the child. We want to be able to tell that story. We were there the night he was born. We saw the baby. Make that experience so fresh in our hearts that tonight, as we go back home, we will be able to, to say so, that we have been close to the beauty of life being born not only for himself but the life of the world we pray in the precious name of jesus amen the Christ candle. So as soon as Advent begins, we light the first candle, which is the candle of love. Then we light uh, the candle of uh, hope, then love, then joy, then peace. And tonight, because love, joy, peace, Nothing of that can come without Jesus. Today we light the author of life, the candle that reminds us that Jesus, when he is at the center of our lives, we have love and joy and peace and hope and faith and salvation. So tonight on Christmas Eve, we can say Christ is born. Merry Christmas. Joy to the world. Amen.
Our scripture reading is from Luke 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her.
So this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was, a faithful, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to the public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he, after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth, she will give birth to a son, and you are to give, her the, give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until he gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus.
Our next scripture is Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. God uses those whom uh, he calls. God uses the Cleveland family mightily. <laughs> We're very glad that they are with here this evening. Thank you for ministering with us. You have heard the word now many times. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. O oh, come, let us adore him. Emmanuel, come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. I cannot hear those words enough. It reminds me of what I am here for. What are we here for? It's a great time to be together. You know, there is no work for many people. Uh, still today, thank God, <laughs> we live in a Christian nation. I think that uh, tomorrow, the 25th, is the only, day, the only day in the year that some businesses are closed. So we take the opportunity and we come together, people travel. This is going to be a busy weekend. What are we here for? Did you come to hear the pastor preach? <laughs> That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> uh, we're moved to come here for more than that. We're moved to be here by love and gratitude to our Savior. We remember the words, Emmanuel, God is with us. And this is a chance for us to come to adore Him. Maybe we can think to answer that question, what are we here for? Maybe we, maybe we can think about why did the original worshipers on Christmas Eve, or during Christmas, what did they go to to the manger for, or to the house for? What were they seeking for? You know how the multitudes followed Jesus when he grew up, but when he was a baby, would they come there to ask for a healing? Did they need advice? Maybe they went to the manger because they needed advice, a word of wisdom. Maybe at as, as it happened later on, brothers would come to see Jesus seeking mediation because they had a dispute, an inheritance dispute. dispute. Is there anybody here today in that situation? Many people just came to ask Jesus, how, how can I go, how can I enter eternal life? You might think the question is good, and it is a good question. It is, it is an important question. How can, I, how can I inherit eternal life? That's a good question. But even at the, at the manger is different. Because we, cannot, we are not coming to the manger who ask, how can I receive eternal life? Maybe, maybe we, we need a clarification from the Bible, a word that we don't understand, and we go... We go and say, can you, can you tell us what this means? Searching for meaning. That is not what we come here to do tonight. And that's not what the original Christmas worshipers came to the manger to do. They were there just simply to worship 
Jesus, to marvel in the miracle of a promise that was being fulfilled before their eyes, a Savior that was being born, and he came as a child to change this whole world. And I think that they were just excited that the promise of salvation was finally at hand. By the way, I love to hear the baby cry. <laughs> we have the image of Jesus sleeping in the manger. Maybe, maybe he was, but uh, you know that babies cry. So uh, not a problem at all. This takes me actually to my next question. The baby Jesus, actually, they could not do anything of the, the items that I have been um, mentioning. He could not do anything of the above. Everything had to be done for the baby. Everything. He needed to be fed. I would imagine Joseph helping Mary. Um, the baby needed to be wrapped and unwrapped when the due time came. He needed to be burped. I'm sure all of you who have been mothers and fathers here, you can add a lot more to, to the list that I have here. He needed to be wiped. You know, baby Jesus. He needed to be wiped. He needed to be held. And maybe... I assume they also had a good lullaby, lullaby songs. He needed to be sang to so that he would go to sleep. And I think that everybody who was coming to the manger looking to see the baby, they just came to worship him, to adore him. That's what the wise men did. But they just wanted to be able to tell. My eyes saw the Savior. And maybe when he grew up, maybe that's when, what many people just needed. They were not looking for a miracle. They were looking like the women who were forgiving of their sins. And they were just looking to anoint his feet with perfume. To wash his feet and to dry them out with her hair. Just looking for an opportunity to serve Jesus, to adore him. And to say, to be able to say, I met him, I knew him. They were probably looking for a personal experience of Jesus. A personal relationship with the Savior. That would be the right reason to come to church today. Looking for a right, the right reason that would be a personal relationship with God, with Jesus, the Savior. The song that we have heard, it's still echoing in my mind, is a beautiful crescendo, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. It makes reference precisely to one of the words, one of the names by which Jesus was called in the, the Gospel of Matthew. His name will be called Emmanuel, God with us. It's a wonderful it's a wonderful name that promises that the presence of Jesus will never fail us. At the end of the gospel, the gospel of Matthew, we have the same promise reaffirmed. When Jesus is talking to the disciples on the mountain just before he ascended, he told them, Surely, behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. I am with you always. It's the promise that God brings us once and again and again to be with us always. Now, is that good or bad? Of course, it's good. But, you know, when somebody tells you, I'm going to be with you always, where do we hear those words? Those are the vows when weddings take place, right? I promise that I'm going to be with you in times of health or in times of sickness, wealth or poverty. I'm going to be with you at all times. 
beautiful words during marriage ceremonies. What happens at some point after that? We begin to take each other for granted. And their relationship can turn boring, maybe you could say. Now, let's be honest. That's the same thing happened to us and God. Don't we say sometimes that well, we just go to church just because that's what I do. But uh, Maybe I'm a Christian. I don't even need to go to church. I have Jesus in my heart. Jesus promised that he loves me. Emmanuel, he's going to be with me forever, forever and ever. So, you know, whatever I will do, it doesn't make a difference. I can count on Jesus forever. Unfortunately, you know what happens to, what would happen to a marriage if that would be the attitude in a marriage. It will end. It will end. But I, what I am going to say now about God and Jesus you can also apply it to your relationship, spouses, or your relationship with your family. I remember my daughter when she was growing up and she was uh, asking the tough questions that every teenager asks daddy or mommy. Do you love me because I am your daughter? Just because I was born into your family, I am your daughter. Do you love me just be or do you love me? Do you know who I am? In other words, and do you love me for who I am? You know, in marriage, sometimes it happens that we think that we have been living with our spouses for a number of years, whatever those are, and we think that there is nothing else to get to know. No more surprises. I know the way he or she reacts and uh, I just take it for granted. There is no more surprises. And I will tell you, the same thing is going to apply. I'm going to tell you something that is going to apply to your relationships with one another and to your relationship with God. There is something always, something new waiting to happen if you can discover it in your relationships. There is something, an aspect, a trait, in your loved one that you did not know and it was there waiting for you to discover it together the same thing happens with God there is so little that we know about God in the book of Lamentations is a book supposedly after a tragedy when Jerusalem was destroyed and the Jeremiah the prophet in the midst the midst of all destructions when everything was looking so bad the future of the nation was uncertain. What is going to happen to Israel now that everything is destroyed? And Jeremiah writes a beautiful poem, chapter 3 of Lamentations. He says, His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. They are new every morning. I promise to you, that if we come to Bethlehem expectant, if we really go searching for, the, Beth, for the, the, the Bethlehem baby with the same expectations of finding the Savior, seeing the Savior for the first time, same will happen to you with the baby Jesus, same will happen to you in your relationships. You might say to me, that's easy for you to say, of course, you're married to Isel Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah, it is easy for me to say. I, I will have to agree with you. I'm married to a woman that surprises me every day. Every day. I, I'm still getting to know more about her. The other day I was telling Isel, you know, we need, to, we need to work more together in church. She was speaking from the pulpit, and I was just drinking and eating from the words that she was saying. 
she doesn't have the same lock. She cannot probably say the same thing about me. But I can tell you that every morning when we wake up, you, you just try. You just you don't give up on each other. You don't take each other for granted. You can just say, there's something new for me. In my son, my daughter, my, my, my father. My father is 92. I went to visit with him on his birthday, November the 30th. I knew that there was something new that I could get from him every time I see him. Even though he tells me the same stories. <laughs> the same stories. There is something new every time I can see his face. I don't want to think of the day when I cannot see his face. And you might say the same of, about your loved ones. You might say the same about your loved ones. So my brothers and sisters, this is the time for relationships. This is the time in which we go to Bethlehem, to the baby, not, about, not thinking about what can I get? What do I need that the baby can give me? I go to Bethlehem because I want to contemplate the face of my Savior and worship Him. I do not take His love for me for granted. Yes, He loves me. He died in enough, enough to die for us on the cross. But we don't take it for granted because, you know, even in that love, you don't even know the depth, as Paul says, the depth or the height or the width of the love of God for us. There is so much more. So we come tonight because we acknowledge and we confess that nothing in this world, nothing else, not wealth, not entertainment, no trips, no cruises, not a big house, not a car, there is nothing in this world. There are people today who have nothing of the above in the world in which we live. We are so blessed in this country. But we would be lost, completely lost, if we forgot that there is nothing else that we need in this life than a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior. And also a new relationship with each of us every single day. Look at your mom, your dad, your spouse, your children your parents, and if we look enough in the eye, you will see something new. You will see something that will touch you. And I come on Christmas Eve because I want that relationship to be strengthened, and I do not want to take it for granted, and I do not want it to disappear. I do not want anything to separate me or us from the love that we have in Christ Jesus. So my brothers and sisters, we, we're having a wonderful service today. I'm, I'm touched uh, by the message and the music. I'm just going to ask you today, we're going to have communion in a few minutes. Come and have that personal relationship with Jesus. Do not take it for granted. I am with you always because He wants to enjoy our presence and we have no other way to enjoy our life than with our Savior. Amen.
We're now going to get ready to receive communion. Uh, as you were coming into the church today, you might have been given a small set that contains the juice and, and the bread. Uh, hold on to it. Don't open it yet. Don't eat it yet. Um, we're going to pray first that God will bless the elements. And we remember the reason why we celebrate communion. On the last meal that Jesus had with his disciples, he took the bread and he broke it and gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Every time that you eat from it, do so in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup 
lifted it up and gave thanks to God and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. If you remember that word too, it's the same thing we call the marital vows, the covenant. Every time that we drink from this cup, we renew our covenant, our commitment to serve God and to be with God at all times. Let us pray. Dear God, bless these elements of bread and juice and let them be for us your body and your blood. Bless these elements of juice and bread in the hands of the congregation and in the hands of those who are worshiping from home, online. I pray that you will bless those hands too, those elements, those homes, those lives, those families, and this world, God. As you became flesh and blood for us once again, God, through your church, become present, through your Holy Spirit, become present into this world. And now as we eat and as we drink, come to us, abide in us, enlighten our relationship with you, God, so that it will be new every day. And we pray as your Son, Jesus, taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the United Met to the Church communion is open. That means that you do not need to be a member of this church to have communion. If you feel Christ in your heart, please open your elements. Have the body of Christ and the blood of Jesus broken and shed for you. Let's eat and drink together. Amen. And the soul fell. 
love is love and is gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for slaves of brother and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet him of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord oh praise his name for He's a living miracle. He is a living miracle. Praise God. Our God is good. Hallelujah. And sometimes there is darkness around us. <laughs> but we are ready, aren't we? Because even though our little light might be small, you turn it on. You can turn yours on now. And you know what happens? The, dark, the darkest or the darker it is outside, the darker it is in the world, the brighter your own light shines. The more darkness there is, your light will reach farther and farther and far, farther. And tonight, as we have come to be with the baby, with the baby Jesus, and to grow in that relationship, a personal relationship with our Savior, he now turns to us and says, okay, now you have your salvation. You have your blessings. I am with you. There are many people that do not know that. Go, and you be their light, and you be their salvation. So now we're going to sing. Um, Mr. Bill Wright will help us in the organ. And I believe that the Cleveland's will help us. Will you guide the way? Um, by the way, thank you so much for a wonderful uh, Christmas Eve. Thank you for thank Heath and Brandon, too, singing, and the choir, and Bonnie, and Mr. Allen. Now it is our time to feel the peace of Christ in our hearts and go into the world to share it. Mm -hmm. 